is the Latin alphabet. Because again, we have forms that look as though they'd be the same thing. But for French and Polish, they like that acute mark to be something completely different. And for Turkish and Romanian, that little loop under the S, um, for Turkish it's one thing, and for, for Romanian it's something else completely. So that really is enough for me to worry about. And my attitude about this has become, if I can't read it, I can't draw it. Because how on earth am I supposed to know if I've done this correctly? So uh, I, I drew the, the amplitude on the top, but the, uh, the version on the bottom, very competently drawn here in Thailand. And uh, again, I can't read this. And uh, I've been asked in a number of interviews if I would ever attempt to draw Chinese or Japanese. And uh, well, to start with, it, it really takes a team of people unless you have 10 or 12 years to finish one typeface. And uh, so I found that the natives do it best. This is a typeface by an Armenian designer. And this uh, was done as a project at the Royal Academy of Art in Holland this year as a, a graduate program in the type design uh, department. And he's really pushed Armenian in directions it hasn't gone in in a, a really long time because it's his language. He knows what's going on. Uh, in contrast, this typeface by an, an American designer from Maryland, um, this is fun for him because, you know, it's, it, it's like tourism. But uh, this typeface has been criticized because uh, the, the specimen is full of typos and um, there's sort of strange things going on uh, in terms of the forms. And I, I feel like this is a form of cultural imperialism with type designers from the West coming in and saying, okay guys, here we are to fix everything. I know it's your alphabet, but we'll show you how to do it right. And uh, you have to wonder what the motivation is in a lot of these cases. Um, could they just be doing it to sell more fonts in more places and, and make more money? Um, I think that's, that's certainly one aspect of it. Um, but um, Again, this, you, don't, you don't need me coming here to tell you how to do this properly. Um, there's, uh, thanks to the internet, the cost of making a typeface and publishing it and distributing it has gotten much lower than it ever has been at any time in the past. And so new type foundries are springing up all over the world. Uh, and the Greek designer who drew it brought his expertise with his alphabet to it. And uh, I, all I brought to it was knowing what the typeface uh, looks like in the first place. And so uh, on paper you can say that I've done design typefaces for, for all of these different places, Russia, Greece, Thailand, but uh, really I, I wasn't the one actually doing the work, I was just consulting on it. Because when it comes to designing a, a typeface for a foreign alphabet, the local alphabet always has to win. Uh, you can tell when it's been forced. And so the uh, characteristics of the typeface have to uh, take a back seat to the alphabet. And every once in a while you really get lucky. This swash J just happens to adapt really well as a swash F for Russian. And uh, this is a, a really recent project that we did for uh, with a designer in Moscow for the, the Russian edition of InStyle magazine. And uh, something that, that I can't bring to the table when working with foreign alphabets is the cultural associations of this. This typeface, Deutsche Face, to an American, has Art Deco glamour. It looks like old Hollywood, it looks like the 30s. And uh, in Greece, they, they have a version that was drawn for House and Garden magazine. Uh, to a Greek person, a geometric sans serif like this means ancient history. So they don't get any of the Art Deco. They get uh, togas and, and, uh, and ancient history from this. And I have no way of knowing that. So, um, Sum it up. Draw it yourself. And thank you.